Hi everyone, I'm Cat Coloring. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to this color along in Romantic Country Old Rose Tea Room. So last time we colored the sky and the clouds, the roses, the rose bushes, the forest here in the background and all of this grass and the sheep here on the field. So today we are going to continue coloring um, in this book and uh, I'm not quite sure that we will finish it this time because we have a lot of things to color. So I think that today we will begin by coloring these small stones here on this path and then color some of the bricks here and the tables and chairs here and then the house later. So, let's get started. So, as you remember, we are using Prismacolor pencils for this one. And I will begin uh, this part today by coloring the stones here, or flagstones here, in the grass. And I will be using uh, the 30% warm grey PC1052 and the 50% warm grey PC1054 and big surprise for shadows, 90% warm grey PC 1058. And then to add a sort of a little moss-like uh, feeling to some of the stones, I think the moss green PC 1097. So Erie writes, so Erie in, her, writes in, her, um, in the beginning of the book that this uh, cocot place is a, um, a place that has um, been well kept for centuries and nothing has really changed. So I think that overall things are, you know, maintenanced. But I also think that uh, when you come to this uh, old rose tea room, that um, you can find a little bit of moss here and there on these flagstones uh, on the grass here. So I will just color the surface light with the lightest color, the 30% warm gray. And uh, then I will color with the 50% here. This area is in shadow. So it has to be a bit darker. And um, I will just begin by adding some more shadow there and here and actually us also over here. And well, I think that um, we could put a little moss here, perhaps a bit here. So you can choose if you want some of this moss green to be on top of these. I just think that when you look at flagstones uh, in, in, in gardens and on terraces and so on, you can't avoid not having some moss here and there. Especially after a very wet and rainy winter, like the one we have had here in Denmark. It has been extremely wet. It had, well, first January began with three weeks of snow and ice and cold. And then when the snow melted, then it just began raining and it rained all through the rest of January and February. So we have had so much water on roads. And in the gardens, on lawns, and we have had little rivers and lakes completely flooded, flooding roads. And we haven't tried that for um, many, many years here in Denmark. It has been quite awful for some people. So I'm just adding a bit more shadow uh, underneath here with the 90% cold grey. No, warm grey. Sorry, warm grey, not cold grey. And then I will just add another layer here of the 
I actually um, had a, tried it a couple of times when I drive to my work. I work at this um, school for young people between 16 and 25 who uh, haven't con uh, finished the normal schools in Denmark. And uh, they need a second chance, uh, another break. Uh, a lot of them are, what's it called? Dysle dyslectic. Oh my God, that's such a hard word. Dyslectic. Uh, so they have real trouble reading uh, and, and writing for that matter. And a lot of them have uh, HD, ADHD, ADD uh, diagnosis. So... Um, they haven't really been able to um, cope through the normal schools uh, system here in Denmark. So I work there and teach them Danish and English. And uh, I also have social studies and uh, try to get them to uh, take the exam so they can move on to high school or some other form of education or to get a job. Well, anyway, I was driving... Uh, to my work and um, outside of my town there is a railroad and it crosses the road so you have to drive under the railroad and that uh, was completely flooded uh, and I have never experienced, I have lived here for 23 years and that road has never ever ever been flooded and also some of the um, freeway was also flooded so I had to drive a completely different route to get to my work and to get home again. It was so weird. Never tried that before. And that happened a couple of times, both in January and also in February. And like I said, we are really not used to weather like that in, in Denmark here. So a little more moss green. <laughs> A little more dark with the 50% warm grey underneath it here. And I don't think that we will add so much shadow besides the one I have already laid down here. Perhaps also a little bit here, just a darker color. And then I will just finish off with a layer on top with this 30% warm gray. So we can see now that these flagstones are old and not new. They have a little bit of moss on them and that's it and then I will actually find my black and then just sort of enhance the shadow here where they lie on the surface of the lawn here all this grass. So, those were the flagstones in the grass. Okay, so now we have come to this bit of the um, of the roses here, and uh, the earth is going to be colored with dark brown, PC nine forty six, and then this sort of little stone wall here. With a uh, cool gray, uh, ten percent PC ten fifty nine, and also cool gray thirty percent PC ten sixty one, and cool gray fifty percent PC ten sixty three, cool gray seventy percent PC ten sixty five, and a little bit of shadowing, and um, cool gray ninety percent PC ten sixty seven. So let's get started here. Started here. 
and I'm just coloring the earth here with the dark brown. Nothing fancy about that, just some brown here. And uh, then these stones, and I take the 10% cool gray and just color a bit in the middle to make it a bit lighter here. And then I take the 30% cool gray. And just color around the 10% cool gray. And these one down here, just get with the, and this one over here, the 30% cool gray. Um, hmm, I think that this is also some part of the wall here. And that must be a chair also. So then I take the 50% cool gray. Oh, I have forgotten this one. So I take the 50% cool gray and now I color the rest and here on top on these And you can see that we're beginning to get a little bit of feeling here that we have some bricks here, that it's a brick wall. And then it's just actually a matter of, well, layering and adding the darker colors. Like the 70% cool gray down here and here so that you can see each brick And then a bit more shadow over here, where we have some shadow from the rose bushes. And then you can add a bit more here of the 50%. So you can see that the bottom of the brick wall here is darker than the top.
and then you can add some 30% here on top. And the 10% here. And finally, some more shadow here with the 90% cool gray. Can also add a little bit of shadow here underneath these rose bushes. And then you can add some more shadow here and there with this 90% cool gray. And then you can continue layering until you're satisfied. And that was this little brick wall. Okay, so time to color some of the little things. This windmill and I am going to be using 50% Cool Grey PC 1063 and 20% Cool Grey PC 1060. And then I'm going to, for the roof, be using Black Raspberry PC 1095. And this one, Mahogany Red PC 1029. This is one of five of the Prismacolors that I have never sharpened because I have practically never used them. So aside from this, it's actually the henna, china blue, and the gold and silver, and then this mahogany red. But I think it's about time to start using it. So if we begin with the roof, I start with the black cherry, and I imagine that we have some sort of light over here. So I'll lay most of my shadows here at the back and then I use the mahogany red for the rest. And why those two colors? Well, if we look at um, this color family chart, we can see here that mahogany red and black raspberry are in the same color family and these are the last two colors. I could also have used tenor henna and uh, mahogany red, but this is more brownish color. And I think that these two are a very good match, mahogany red and black raspberry for the roof of, of this windmill. So now I will just take the darkest of the gray, the 50% cool gray. And I want to lay my shadow down here. and also on these wings. And then I take the 20% cool gray and just color the rest. I mean, you don't have to spend a lot of time blending and blending and coloring these little things. Oh, I actually think that I forgot to color this one. And then if you want a bit more shadow, like I usually do, you can take the 90% cool gray and just lay a little bit over here. If you want to. And uh, that's it. That was the windmill. And now we just color this little basket here for the roses. And I will be using Burnt Ochre PC 943 and Sienna Brown PC 945. So I will just take the darkest of the colors and color here. And then it's quite easy with the burnt ochre.
and that was the basket and then you know that I always want a little bit of um, some shadowing so I will just use the espresso to put some a little bit of a shadow here where the leaves and the flowers just create a little bit of shadow and uh, then we have this hook um, and I think that we will just be using the black for this hook nothing fancy about that hook and uh, that's it so now we're going to color the gate here and uh, I think that we will be using the 70% cool gray PC 1065 and 50% cool gray PC 1063 and for the rest the 10% warm gray PC 1050 and the white PC 938 think and I want this uh, to be primarily white because we have some uh, darker colors here and I don't want it to get all dark 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 so first with the 70% cool gray and then the 50% And um, well, then we take the 10% warm gray. And just color a little bit if you can imagine that this is the shadow side. So I will just lay down the shadows here and down here it's probably a little bit darker so there's hardly any white here. Mm. And here I don't want to layer and layer and layer so I just press actually a little bit hard to get this very light warm gray down and then I use the white You can see we have a little sign here. We'll have to find another color for the sign. And you can still see that we have some shadow here. I actually think that I want to take the 20% cool gray just to not know the 20% warm gray here. PC 1051 to just add a little more here. And perhaps down here and here where we have some shadow from the bush 
and then if you think that up because I did color with some green here if you really want to um, make it a bit more white you could use your white Posca if I can get any color out of this one it's, it doesn't really want to ah oh, here you could add a little bit of more white here because I was a little heavy on the green here so I just want to remove any traces of the green color here could also take some of the black lines away here with the white Oh, yeah, it could have been easier to just color it brown, but now I want it white. And that was the cake. Okay, so it, now it's time to color the chairs and tables. And I have chosen light colors. So I think that inspired by this gate, I will continue with the white for the chairs. So I will be using the white PC 938, the 10% warm gray PC 1050, the 20% warm gray PC 1051. And then we have some decoration on the chairs and um, we also have the tables. So I think that for the roses here on the chairs, I will go with the roses we can see here. So that means it's hot pink again, PC 993, and the pink rose, PC 1018, and a little blush pink, PC 928, um, and also the grass green, PC 909, for these roses here. And... And the tablecloths, uh, we, you can see here that we have two, a striped one, uh, and then a more, in, I think, embroidered on top of it with some flowers. So I think that the striped one, I will be using the lilac PC956 and the Palmer violet PC1008. And then for the embroidered cloth, I will be using the Great Lavender PC 1026 and um, for the cloth itself and then for the decorations I will be using the pink PC 929 and the Deco pink PC 1014 as far as I can see and uh, then I for these little I don't know, branches or leaves or something. I think that I will be using the Apple Green PC 912. Um, and perhaps some white also. I haven't decided yet if I want white on the cloth. And uh, I will also be using um, some of these colors for this uh, teapot and the cup here and the saucer and the plate. And then for these cakes, I think it's some sort of muffins. Uh, I will be using the yellow ochre PC 942 and PC 1034, the golden rod. Um, um, and well, perhaps some other colors, but mainly these colors uh, for these tables um, and the teapots and coffee pot. I think that's coffee actually and another teapot here so let's get started
2, 3, clip. Okay, so now you can see that I have colored the tables and the tablecloths and all of these teapots and coffee pots and so on. And also Joseph, the duck here, just used a scarlet uh, lake here uh, for this butterfly and yellowed orange for the beak. And then a little bit of uh, the 10% warm gray and then the white here. And um, you can see here with the bag down here, I colored it all black. And then I used my Sakura Jelly Rolls Moonlight. These are the neon um, colors in the Jelly Roll series. And I used the dark green and uh, yellow and two different sort of pinks and a purple to make the flowers here. You can do it as you want. You can also choose another background color and then just color the flowers that Eri has uh, drawn here. But I just thought that it would look nice with a black back here. And then I used this uh, Jelly Roll Metallic Gold and it's not a shiny gold like the pencil sparkle pop glitter gel pen gold I have. It's a more um, subtle form of gold here. So I used it for the handle and the sides here. And I used my pencil sparkle pop pink glitter gel pen to decorate this teapot and this cup over here. So uh, all we need is this sign. And I think that I will continue with this white sort of uh, tree. So... Um, Oh, not tree, wood. So I uh, have colored this one 20% warm gray because it's in uh, some sort of shadow. And these up here also a little bit. And then over here, I do think that we also have to have something more dark and underneath here. And then I just take the 10% on top. And still the 10% warm gray. And then I take the white, which actually needs to be sharpened. Before I can continue. And then I just color it all white. And also white on top of this. And as you noticed here, I used my white Posca to sort of um, remove uh, a lot of the black lines here. I can't do it here with these chairs because I haven't colored the house yet, but I can do it with some of this sign. I just wanted to add some extra white here and that was because I had actually been too eager with the green color so you could see it. So, um, but this one is actually colored so um i think that i can actually just use it to blur the lines a little bit that I also want to blur the line here. And you can choose to do it or not. That's up to you. But I just do it because I think that the lines are somewhere a little bit thicker than other places. So if I want to just um, lighten them up a bit, I can use this Posca pen too remove some of it. You can see here. But that's totally up to you. So now um, that we have colored the sign, we just need this part of the sign. And um, I think that I will go with some of these colors I have used here. So I think that I want to use the deco pink for the background here. 
I mean you could color it completely black and then write on top of it with the white Posca or some of these gel pens but I think that um, this sign like the rest of this old rose tea room uh, is a bit old-fashioned we have to remember that Eri herself writes in the beginning of this book that uh, Kokot is a country where well, it's almost like time has stood still and um, everything is as it has been for centuries. So um, I think that um, this is a, just a bit old fashioned. So a light color here. And uh, actually, I think I want to use the 20% warm gray here. And if you have followed me for a while, you know that I actually, I'm not a big fan of all of these uh, gray Prismacolors, or I'm not a fan of gray colors in general. But I do think that these uh, Prismacolor grays, uh, there's so many of them, but I do think that sometimes they come in handy and that they are some sort of more versatile um, sort of gray colors here. So, we need to color the rose, and uh, I will stay with this hot pink and the rose pink for this one up here. So it sort of matches the chairs and the roses here. And um, then the grass green for leaves on other, both sides. And then I actually think that I want to sharpen this pink. So that is really sharp and um, color these letters here with the pink. Old Rose Tea. So tea room in black to emphasize that this is a tea room and then old rose tea in pink. And then I just take the warm gray 90% and just lay a little shadow down here and down here and uh, oh, I think that we are almost finished now I think that we are finished with the part two of this tea room or rose tea room. Yep. Okay, so we are now at the end of this color along part two in Romantic Country, the page here with old rose tea room. And uh, the last third and last part will come up soon. And here we will color the house in the back with the window and the roof and the sign and the bricks. So I hope that you have enjoyed this. I also hope that you will like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I also hope that you will spread the word about my channel to other people uh, that might like to watch tutorials and color alongs and uh, reviews and some of the other stuff that I do on my channel. Um, remember that you can also follow me on my Instagram and my Facebook page, Cat Coloring. So I will just wish you a very nice day 
happy coloring and until the next time bye